A few days ago, I gave an official geometry rundown on the new Mongoose Arter with its awesome 66.5 degree head tube angle. Quick side note on this Arter and the tapered head tube, because if you watch my Cav Reviews channel, you'll know I reported on this tapered head tube having a different lower headset cup. It was news to me, so I contacted Mongoose, I got the official spec for this, and it is not. The ZS5640, like the Axome and all the other Schwins and the Ledge, it is a ZS4455, and that's official. Now to the ledge, because it is ledge geotime. I have the numbers straight from Mongoose. The images you're seeing right now, the slight mods that I've done, stage one of Project Ledge X1. I'll put a link down in the description to that video, as well as a link for that headset for the Ardor, if you want to take a look at that. For my bike, stage one parts already gone, stage two underway video coming soon. Ledge spec sheet data, let's get rolling. Starting with info on the fork, and I'm running down this list as it is listed, so I'll be jumping all over the bike, but first the fork travel 100 millimeters, and I'm going to strike through this right away, because technically this is accurate, it is the stanchion measure, but I measure effective fork travel, which is 80 millimeters. Next, the reach, always looked at by hardcore mountain bikers on the ledge X1 medium frame, 467.1, all measurements in millimeters unless I specify otherwise. A related measure, the stack height, 608.8. Back to the fork for the offset measure, 46 millimeters. The fork's crown to axle measure, 525. Lots of info centered around the seat tube. First, the length, 430 millimeters or 17 inches. The angle for the seat tube, 76.8 degrees. The seat post diameter, 27.2 millimeters. The outer tube diameter, people ask a lot about what clamp. You'll want a clamp that's 31.8 millimeters. Chainstay length, 450 millimeters. Bottom bracket drop, 35. Bottom bracket height, 340 millimeters. Getting to the two longest measurements, top tube length, 610, wheelbase, 1200.2. And a spec always important to me, the standover height, 727.1 millimeters. And here's something I got wrong. I measured the stem length as 35 millimeters. The spec sheet says it's 40. It also gave a chain line measurement, 47.5 millimeters. Okay, now take a deep breath because I know this is a part most of you have been looking for with fevered anticipation, especially since the ardor. The head tube, starting with what we know, this is a 1.5 tapered head tube. Length specification, 110 millimeters long. Angle, for the ledge X1, this medium frame, 68 degrees, which I love, but I know there's probably some confusion out there because the Arter was 66.5 and slacker is better, right? Let's discuss, I'll race you to the bike bar. Where the audio is going to be different because I'm on my shotgun mic so I can have access to this frame also. There's the air conditioner, but 68 degrees we just established for the head tube angle here. I want to point out that not long ago we would have begged for 68 degrees on anything, but there is a distinct difference between this full suspension frame and the Ardor, the hardtail frame with its 66.5, which is amazingly awesome by the way, but 68 isn't a downgrade for us because this is a full suspension. I'm going to get into a little example here in just a second, but first I want to mention if you go to, I don't know, say the Trek website and you pull up their full suspension bikes and you look at one that's around $10,000 and you go to its medium frame, and this is a medium frame here on this Mongoose Ledge X1, look at that a 68 degree head tube angle on a $10,000 bike. So you see, 68 is just right for this type of bike, and here's why. There, of course, would be a shock absorber right here. And when this shock compresses, this pivot arm moves down and compresses the shock with movement stresses on the rear tire pushing up. That compresses in on this shock and allows the shock to push back to level things back out. And what happens is this head tube angle actually changes as this bike pivots and flexes around. So 68 is a good middle ground. Because if this compresses too much, you could shoot to, I'm making up numbers here, but a 60 degree head tube angle or bounce up. It could be a 70, a 71 degree head tube angle. So you see, there's a lot of variation here. That's why they pick sweet spots that work, and also they're sag. You sit on this bike, it's going to give just a little bit. It's going to actually give that way. It's 
It's going to give that way just a little bit. Well, that might make that 68 degree head tube angle 66 degrees just by sitting on the bike. And also, I want to talk about measurement here really quick. Kind of not, not part of the head tube angle, but the rear shock. I have a 165 millimeter rear shock. People have asked me how much travel there is on this rear end. Well, that shock has 35 millimeters of travel. A 190, which I also have, and I'm going to be testing with quite a few shocks. You'll see over the next probably month. But the 200 or 190, excuse me, has, I believe, 50 millimeters of travel. Then there's 200s with like 65, but you run into problems of clearance when you get so high on this, but that travel is not the actual travel of this full suspension. Because what happens, and I measured this, and I did so in a very Alabama sort of way, I taped, I put a stand beside this, and I put some tape right at the bottom of this dropout, and I measured this distance here with the tape, and I went down five millimeters. When I went down five millimeters, this raised up almost 15 millimeters. So you can see travel, a lot more movement back here than there is right here. The way all this relates and pivots, it gives more effective travel than just what the shock travel is. So don't be skewed by that. If you're looking up shocks and you say, well, 165, that's only 35 millimeters. That's not a lot of travel. Well, that actually is a lot because I'm going 5 to roughly 15. So big, big deal. Now this is kind of pseudoscience because I don't have any accurate way to measure this, but I think still fairly accurate making a mark, moving a certain distance, and then seeing if that distance is larger than this distance, and it was by a significant amount, almost three, well, yeah, about three times. So there you go. Double lesson suspension travel and now you know the head tube angle 68 and that 68 perfect for this bike and there you have it now let's discuss in the comments or maybe even in chat if i do this as a premiere i'm going to check that out but comments or chat however that works because i know there's a lot to absorb here and there's much much more to come on this bike so make sure you're subscribed and all that thanks for watching and have a great day